I want to show you all something. You know, when I started the BYOB stuff, I started thinking, well, about myself and paying off debt, because that's what I used it for first. Then I started using it for other things, real estate. And it wasn't until later that I actually started lending money, which is why it took so long for PMC to actually exist, because I wasn't ready for it at that stage in my life. I had a process of things I had to go through. But I did a TEDx talk not long ago, and that TEDx talk was a letter to my daughter. Hardest damn talk I've ever, ever had to write. And I had needed a lot of help. Andrew, Shauna, Gabby all had to help me with it. But it wasn't just that, it was the hardest speech ever to deliver. Because when you give a speech, a TEDx talk, or even right now, this is all being recorded. This will be remembered for longer than I'm alive, hopefully. But your TEDx talk is also remembered for longer than you're alive. But my TEDx talk was a letter to this little girl. Is she on the screen here? Get her up here. That little girl right there, that's who I wrote the letter to. And it's called Rethink Money. If you haven't seen it, you can watch it on my website or on my YouTube at the Chris Noggle. But I wrote that YouTube or that TEDx talk because I wanted her to know the things that I should have learned a long, long, long time ago. Now, when I did that, you know, Vivi was two years old. She's now three. She's not ready for it yet. But how many of you think I got Vivi saying BYOB? Raise your hand. You bet your butt I do. She may not fully understand that, but eventually she will understand that. That little remote control car she's got, I'll be like, BYOB, you can get all the money back for that little car. She'll start learning these things. But the TEDx talk gives her guiding principles, literally using the six laws of wealth in a very simplified way, telling stories. Jesus told stories so that you can understand his teachings. Well, that's what I did. I just told stories about my upbringing, the mistakes I made, and I told her how not to make those same mistakes. So I think sometimes when you're hearing all of this, you're thinking, how can I apply this to my life? But then I, I urge you to take one additional step. Start thinking about how can you apply this, not just for you, but for people that come after you. For me, it was Vivi. She's my why and your kids are your why. How many of you have children in here? Can I get the lights on the audience? Let's just see how many of you have children. Like, just look at that. Almost everybody in here. Now, all of you that had your hands up for children, that's your why, right? Why you get up, it's what, it's your greatest love of life. All right, we'll bring them back up here. So when I learned this and I started teaching Vivi about this, and there, there she is, I set up her first policy when she was six months old. Yeah, she was young. She didn't even, she didn't, couldn't say BYOB then. She can now. And it was just five grand a year. That's all I put into it. But I don't think it's important to know that I set a policy up. I think some of you are probably like, of course you did. Of course you did. But it's important to understand what problem that policy solves for her. And I want to walk you through this. Some of you have seen this, a lot of numbers. Don't get too caught up in the numbers. I just want you to focus on just the problem this solves. Okay, so this is a small little $5,000 policy, and it's not even built like any of your policies. It's built almost more like a regular whole life. It's got 60% going to the base and only 40% to the PUA, which a lot of people are like, oh, why would you do that? You don't have access to as much money because my problem I'm solving isn't today. I don't need liquidity in her policy today. I need it later. Now, all the things I'm gonna use this for are not outlined here, but I do wanna just show you here, right here. At 18 years old, I know Vivi may wanna go to college. And I remember when I wanted to go to college, my dad, well, he said he'd been saving, but he didn't have much and they didn't really have the money to send me to school. So I went to a community college because that's what dad could afford, right? And they made it pretty clear that I wasn't going to Harvard or anywhere else. I don't think I was smart enough anyway. But Vivi should have the ability to go wherever she wants to fulfill whatever she needs. But also, I also want to be clear about this. What if Vivi decides she doesn't want to go to college? Maybe college isn't in her future. We should always allow our children to live out their dreams, right? Not ours. Just if we went to school to become an engineer, a doctor, or a dentist, that doesn't mean our children should have to go to school to become an engineer, a doctor, or a dentist, right? They should be able to do whatever they want. So when she's 18 and she's ready to go to school, I can fund her school and I show this. Now don't laugh, 20,000, I know that doesn't pay for much. Heck, that won't even pay for community college, but it doesn't matter the number. The number could be significantly higher. She's got $119,000 in the policy at that age. And this is just her first policy, okay? But she could pay for college every single year with this. But if I could just look up, just go back up right here to 16. At 16, how many of you, when you turned 16, like all you could think about was a car? I know that was my case too. I just wanted a car because car meant freedom. And at 16, 
I'm going to teach Vivi, she'll already know, but I'm going to teach her how she can buy any car she wants and get all the money back. However, there are circumstances she needs to understand. So how about this? 16 years old, she'll have $99,143. She could buy a Porsche for that. She could literally, at 16 years old, go out and buy a Porsche Carrera, a used one, not a new one. But if she bought a Porsche, can she make the monthly payment to afford that vehicle? The answer is probably not. And she's gonna have to understand that if you take money from your policy, you have to be an honest banker and pay the money back to your policy. So I will be very clear about that. So it won't so much be what she has and what she can afford, it will be how much she can actually pay her bank back with. Maybe it's 200 a month, maybe it's 300 a month. She'll have to stay within those guidelines knowing she could buy any, almost any car she wants for 99,000 bucks in today's dollars, right? But she can't because she has to be able to pay it back. But I will teach her that in life, you can't always have everything you want, even if you think you can have it, because there are consequences for that. So then college, we take this policy design, I just wanna be clear, this is never, ever, ever how she'll use it. But I wanted, when I did this, I wanted to show this in a way that shows Vivi stealing from her bank, because I wanted to show how well this works. We're taking this money out of the policy, we take these loans, 20,000 each year, okay? And we never pay it back. Now you all have seen or heard us talk about this, do we ever say don't pay your loans back? Do we ever say don't recycle, recapture? Do we ever say steal from your bank? No, but here I am showing her stealing from her bank because I want to show you the power of this. Let's keep going on. After college, what's she going to need? Well, probably a wedding, right? Weddings are expensive. I don't really know. I mean, I got married, uh, I think we were speaking at an event and we got this crazy idea over a couple of cocktails the night before to get married on the stage. That, that's what happened. We literally said to the guy putting the event on, we said, hey, he asked, what are you guys going to do when you're here? We said, I don't, we're thinking about getting married. We just got to pick Marilyn Monroe or Elvis. And he said, oh my God, why don't I marry you? I'm ordained. I'll, or, I'll marry you on the stage. And me and Larissa, like jokingly, but kind of seriously, we're like, yeah, that'd be kind of neat. And it did actually happen. But anyway, no wedding. So useless information. So Vivi is going to probably want a wedding. So 40,000 bucks comes out. So now we've taken 120,000 out and we put 145 in, okay? Just tracking the numbers. Then she's probably gonna want a house. I remember my first house and how difficult it was to get that house because I didn't have the money to put down, but I made it work. And probably a lot of you were the same. So she'll have $154,669 at that time that she could use to buy a house. But I'm just showing 60 grand coming out and I'm not showing any money coming back, no recapture, she's doing it all wrong. After that, Vivi is gonna have kids of her own. I'm gonna be gone. I'll, I'll be off to a much better place by that point, but she'll have kids and her policy will fund her kids college. And she'll teach her kids exactly what I taught her, how to be an honest banker and recapture the money. Although here, I'm just showing her stealing the money. So by the time her kids go to school, we've taken 300,000 out, put 260 in. Still not a very impressive number, but how much money does she have in her policy earning interest and dividends? And you all know about this by now. When you put money in the policy and you take it out, you're actually not using your own money, you're using the death benefit, which you can see your death benefit, it's going up a little bit, but really we're borrowing from the death benefit. We're just using the cash value as collateral. So we've taken out 200 or 300,000 bucks at this point, but she's got a million fifty-two thousand eight hundred seventy-six dollars earning interest and dividends uninterrupted. That's how this all works. Why this is so powerful and it's why I'm showing you this and why I'm showing you that we're stealing from her bank. But then she's gonna retire someday or just need extra income because she doesn't wanna work as hard or do whatever she's doing. I won't know. We show 90 grand coming out starting at age 64, 90 grand all the way until 90 years old. And at 90 years old, I just, I just stop it. I mean, I, we, you show I, I gotta keep going, but at 90, we just gotta cut it off somewhere. So 90 years old, let's do a recap of Vivi's small little $5,000 a year premium deposit policy of which she didn't even put 5,000 in the whole time. You remember, she stopped putting 5,000 and only did 3,000 for the majority. Let's, here's the recap. We put $395,000 over the course of all of those years, which is 90, almost 90 years, a little less, six months short of 90 years. Total loans we took out are $2.64 million. Total net cash value that she has is 2.9. So after all those loans, she still didn't spend 2.9 million. Remember you guys were saying, you know, oh, well, that's not enough for school, does it matter? She has 2.9 million she forgot to use. That's lazy money sitting in the policy. Not only that, I just wanna focus over here on the total cash value that's earning interest and dividends. 5,765,192.
She put 398 in, she's got 5.7 million earning interest and dividends, and she took out all that money and still had 2.9. That's a net return, cumulative, not our, our cash on cash returns like we always talk, which is the right way to do the returns for IBC, but I'm just doing cumulative like the advisors like to do. Oh, no, 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 it's not cash on cash. You put to this total in and you took this much out, so that's cumulative return which is the wrong way when you're putting money in and taking out and making it go to work, right? That's, you wanna look at the cash on cash year over year. But cumulative return on her policy is 744,000, or 744%, I almost said thousand. I don't know what I was getting at there. All I did there is just show you one tiny little policy on one little six month old, it'll just change her whole life. That won't be her only policy. You do know that, right? I'll do more policies. I'll do another one and another one and another one. But the question I have for all of you is, what is your why? If it is your kids, why wouldn't you do the same thing for them? And then why wouldn't you teach them how to get all the money back for all the cars they buy, drive, and own? And then have them teach their kids how to do the same thing. How cool is that? Remember I mentioned at the very beginning of today, I said, when I'm long gone, Vivi's kids and Vivi's kids' kids and kids' kids' kids, however you say that, they'll all get a check in the mail on their birthdays saying happy birthday, Grandpa Chris, or whatever it says. You know how that's done? It's done by creating systems like you've been learning about today. So with that being said, folks, I, I just wanted to preface again, if, if you wanna spend some time with us tonight, upgrade your ticket to the VIP. We'll be having a whole good time here tonight and uh, we'll be able to chat a lot. I know I haven't been out talking with many of you, but tomorrow is gonna be a completely different game because we're gonna be more networking. Because tomorrow, I want, this is my wish, I don't know if I'm gonna get it, but I, I need all of your help. Tomorrow, I would love for someone in here to pay for somebody else's car. Sounds cool, huh? For the person paying for the car, they're like, I, I don't wanna pay for somebody else's car. Matter of fact, yes, you do. You just, yeah, there you go. See, right, can I get the lights in the audience one more time? You wanna pay for someone's car? Absolutely, so she knows exactly what I'm talking about. He needs a car. So she wants to pay for somebody's car, he needs a car. Anyone else need a car in here? Hey, look at that, we got a bunch of people that need cars, but isn't it way more fun when you need a car, but yet somebody else pays for your car? I will show you how to do that. I know I've done it on some webinars, but we're gonna do it live, and my wish would be that it actually happens right here. We got 100 people and more people on, on the virtual. I am almost certain more than one car, more than one college tuition are going to get funded tomorrow. And it's not because somebody's just gonna be writing a check for your cars, because you're both gonna solve each other's problems. Fair enough?